Yeah, you don't bet. Okay, so I got, I tried the metal marker, no go there. Wouldn't do it. But then I, I decided to try a, uh, No, there you can't see see that well. That's, you can see the whole thing in the picture, I think. But the, the other one, you can see those blue marks. I tried a blue highlighter that I had out here, and uh, I almost. I guess I'm dreaming more than anything, but I think I almost saw some telltale signs of numbers when I did. Now that I've done that, so what you do is you, you can use chalk if you have a deep enough impression too. I don't know where I have any chalk other than some. Cheap rock that just wiped it completely clean though. Yeah, highlighter might not work so well. Uh, sometimes you can see through, you know, some highlighters well enough to tell. I almost that's right. Almost saw I saw no, It's not long enough. I guess I should get. Let me try it one more time in that area and see if it's work. If there's really anything there, I need to like to put it on some needle nose pliers or something. I guess. Try to get further if there really is any numbers up there. Turn it, yeah. There's only one way that it'll even mark on it at all. Getting hotter and hotter. I got out here just, I guess, before it started getting hot. It was Sunday, and I'm trying to just, I'm just, I was just going to rest Saturday and Sunday, but then I remembered. I forgot to do this while I was out here working. Get this number. And I need it to make sure I'm ordering the right parts. I pretty much have to order them. I don't have something to drive to go get them. And all I really see is still what looks like the telltale at the top of a three. I don't see anything up higher that looks like it would be a number. I guess this is... I hate to give up because... Well, I've, I've, Given up back when I was younger, when I first learned about this, I'd say, "Well, there's no numbers there," <coughs> and I'd read, read it in the motor manual. I think <coughs> my old original motor manual. I've got a '74 motor manual. This is a '76 truck, and the motors. See, this is not the motor that was in when I got it, and I don't know if that was original either. But this one's not original. I bought it in the junkyard and had it in my '72 Chevy van, and I kind of started remembering all that. And then I took it out, had it rebuilt, put in here, and the one that was in here was okay. It just needed valve guts. So ended up selling it for cheap. I was going to put it in my 72 van, but I didn't get it done. didn't feel up to doing it. I ended up moving out of my land out there where I used to live, and then living in an apartment. I actually got to keep it there, and then when I moved from there, I was moving in with a roommate in another apartment. I had to get rid of it, and I sold it to a guy who used to be my one of my down in where I used to live out in the country, I sold it to him real cheap. The van and the motor sitting in the back waiting to be put in. I think he told me once later he put it in something else and it was a good it was a good motor, I knew it was. Had a good uh, turbo four hundred transmission too. Or, or it might have been a three fifty. It was a three fifty engine, so I can't remember now. Might have been a four hundred because it was out of a three quarter ton van though. I was reading up the other day, I couldn't remember if uh, 400s and 350s would fit small blocks and big blocks and they said in the thing I read just a form and it could be wrong but it said oh the 350s and 400 will both fit your 350 you know so of course you got to have the right torque converter and flywheel and all that but I think the flywheels on the big blocks are bigger if I remember right. I did a lot of hot riding with big blocks I liked them a lot better back then some engine swaps and stuff Well, I don't think there is enough there. I mean, if I, what else could I use? Chalk. It's just, I think there might be a bit of a number there, but they must, somebody must have grinded on that and uh, polished it off years ago. I mean, I don't see any grind marks. Well, it, of course, I scratched it all up. Uh, with the screwdriver a minute ago, but the only before I did that, I could see you know marks going long ways, but no circular marks or anything like somebody used a grinder on it. That's de yeah, that's definitely part of a two or a three. It looks like a three. It almost looks like a question mark. You can't see that. I don't think there's any way to get the light in there where you can. But uh, I don't know on. 
the camera, it might, that blue stuff might just make it all worse instead of better. I guess I'll wipe this off just for the heck of it. Now I'm disappointed, but well, you know when you just go to the auto store, if you get if you get the wrong thing, just don't don't tear it up, don't tear up the package, and then just take it back. But if you're gonna order it, then even if you can send it back, which I will order it in somewhere where I can send it back. I haven't decided yet where, but that takes a lot more time. Yeah. Well, me looking at it, down there about where that le uh, where the dark spot is to the left of it, that on the screen, I mean, in the middle there, that to the left of that's where the that, uh, that three is. I can't. That might let you see. I can't tell. At least the light's more even on it. Now I can't see it, but okay. So that's where your motor number should be. Unless somebody's grinded it off, it makes you wonder, did somebody steal this motor and grind the number off of it back in the day? Ended up in the junkyard? That's, I don't know. Nobody, I can't imagine anybody wanting to grind their numbers off unless they stole the motor. It'd be stupid to keep you from knowing what you got. So, that's a lot of work. A lot more work than uh, just going and buying a one <laughs> used motor. Stealing a motor. People used to do that stuff. Still do, I'm sure. I don't know. I don't hear about that kind of thing anymore. But used to, it was common to hear about cars getting stripped, you know, stolen and stripped down, or they'd strip them down on the side of the road, just about. Kind of, pretty much. Sometimes they almost completely strip them down on the side of the road. Wheels, tires, motor, transmission when somebody would break down. Anyway. Uh, that sucks. But I think that uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is I found a Mr. Gasket full motor gasket set for $42 on Amazon and they're around that. Actually they're about that price on uh, where else? Somewhere else. And O'Reilly, they had free shipping for a few days here, but they wanted fifty-eight dollars for the exact same set, same part number. So I said, well, that's not going to make any difference. <laughs> and it's free shipping on Amazon either. Only thing about Amazon is you're ordering from a bunch of different sellers that all come at different times. And as long as they have good ratings, you'll probably be all right. But you know, you still kind of worry about getting a bad seller. <coughs> but uh, I have had a few times when I did. <coughs> but anyway, I'll have to take off the intake. Oh yeah, what is this? This is an L Brock, but I don't know what number it is. It's called. Uh, I was right watching. I learned a lot more about my carburetor. Found out the difference. Mine's a 4160, and mm -hmm. it's a, the actual number list number is 80 something. H, H, and I, I already knew that from last time when I bought the kit, but uh, I, I finally got down that this is a 4160 type carburetor and uh, that is an bark rifle should be some numbers on it okay there's a name I guess I'm going to put some light on this subject but that could make a, I'm wondering if that'll make any difference in my intake gasket performer okay well that's pretty common I've heard of that a lot hopefully I don't see any numbers on it. I was looking, I kind of glanced at a few pictures of Edelbrock manifolds and I saw a bunch of numbers on kind of where that performer is, you know, and stuff. I don't see any numbers anywhere. Oh! I've got my good shorts on. I wasn't planning on getting out here working. I forgot that I also needed to look at this. No, I mean, it's not that they, they're not that, nothing I have is that good. I didn't put on my jeans. I didn't think I'd get get my legs dirty, but I'm sure I'm going to grease all over my legs. I don't like having shorts on working on the car. Always get more filthy. Plus, you usually get more cuts, more burns. Burns is what really suck. Yeah, there's no numbers over there in the back side either. in front of Elbrock I don't see any numbers here. 
since I don't see so good anymore, I gotta really investigate. Oh. Let's see if I'm missing something. I've always been bad about not eyes swapping things and seeing things wrong. Anyway, so it's an Edelbrock performer. Can I remember that long enough to get it wrote down? Well, I got it on the video now. Okay, so uh, let's put a rag back on there. Just leave that, just leave that up there like that. Put our intake on there to keep it from if it rains or anything. Keep it from splashing in there. Wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be the end of the world if, as long as I didn't leave it and let it rust. But I don't have my <coughs> PVC valve in that hole. I would prefer to have. I think I'll stick that in there. Back here. Right there, I left it up there on the bench. No point in it just laying around when it could plug a hole. Okay. So, I think I'm going to have to take the intake off because of the noises it was making. Even though they quit, that don't mean... All it means is that there's, there's, there's two screws on, the, one on uh, that are missing on the bottom of the carburetor. And when I was watching carburetor videos, the guy, it was a guy, he, could t he was, really knew what he was talking about, and I learned a lot. But the, he didn't say anything about it, but he was holding the carburetor with those same two screws missing. So I'm thinking, did uh, people just realize those fall out too easy and they just don't put them in? Uh, Holly to figure that out and, and do that? Or what? Because I found my old pictures of my, my carburetor that I took the last time I rebuilt it. And those screws were gone in those pictures. But it could just mean they fell out a long time ago when I've been lucky that they didn't get up in the head. Uh, they didn't work their way up into the valve and they have now and maybe they've um, backed off fell back into the intake or maybe they fell down into the cylinder you know if they did that then I'm sure I'd have some real damage in the cylinder walls and, uh, and if if I don't find them I need to decide whether how far I'm going to tear it down just to, you know to try to figure that out but if I can figure out that that's really common if there's no noise still I can figure out it's really common that people take those screws out or that I read something and I don't remember and I took them out or saw a video or years ago or if Holly never put them in there then uh, then I'll you know feel better but of course the noise is that bad that uh, in, I, I tried to I, I, a bunch of my other old previous videos where you can hear that noise I'm sure I haven't watched them yet but I even stuck the tripod metal tripod on the valve cover to let it trent transfer up to the phone so uh but it was a bad enough noise and the valves were when you go around and fill the tailpipe the valves were not closing right you could tell so that would make me th that made me think there was something in the valves the valves now you know once I, the next day when i did take off the valve cover it wasn't making the noise and the valves were all going up and down just fine well, none of them were locked. I thought maybe, you know, some of them could be, one or two of them could be rusted and not opening from it setting, even though I did start it at least a couple of months ago, and it seemed to be. And, it, and the other thing was, the first set, five, six, seven times I started it, it rattled and ran great. It was just bogging out. I figured out, I thought it was a starving for fuel when it was bogging out, but it was flooding. I figured that out, and I saw a bunch of videos on how to fix all that. So I'll put a kit in it and then see how it is, and if it's still messed up, I'll do some of those tweaks I learned. I have to go back and watch the videos again. So anyway, let's go in uh, and figure out. I mean, I'll probably be all right with my gaskets, but and I'm do. I just got to do more research and figure out the best way to buy the parts. I, I looked at, you know, valve cover gaskets and intake gaskets. They were each around twenty bucks each. So forty bucks for a whole set. Forty two, forty three. Might as well get the whole set. Maybe other gaskets I forget about, you know. So anyway, it's done. We'll come back later when I get a little more progress. <laughs>